Hello everybody, welcome to a Press Quest interview. I'm here with none other than Russell Taylor, who is a European champion, a world record holder, and a physique and bodybuilding coach. Russell, how are you doing, mate? I'm doing fine, are you all right? That's it, I'm very well, thank you, I'm very good. So, to kick things off, um, how did you get involved in powerlifting? What did you do? Where, were your, where did your passions lie? Well, um, well, at the start, I was obviously quite overweight, and then I just um, joined the gym like everyone else. And um, you know, just looking up basic programming. My program always had like squat and bench in, and then I was never really had a physique or genetics for bodybuilding, and I needed an excuse for um, just to keep the weight off, really. And we just, when then we looked at like how how strong we were, and we thought, well, we'll just do a meet just to keep us accountable. And being that not many people realize that powerlifting is a weight class sport, so if I knew, you know, if I lost this weight here, and I knew if I had to be competitive, I needed to be a certain weight. And obviously that helped me not, uh, not getting the weight back most of the time, you know, so. Yeah, and yeah, absolutely. And I think people don't know that as something that I wanted to kind of expose more is actually that people think that powerlifting is just one set of people that all come and compete. And actually, of course, as you said, that isn't the case. In terms of competing then, how long have you been competing for? What, where do you compete? How did you get involved in that side of things? Um, I've competed for around about, I think it's uh, three or four years. I think I just, in the, I think I just went like everyone else, went to Google, went to powerlifting. And then just found some local orgs in the in the UK. Obviously, there was a lot of organisations to choose from, and obviously, I just just had to find one that was semi-local and what fit my criteria. What does the meet day mean to you? So, when you go, when you're getting prepared and ready, so the day before, the, the morning of, how do you get ready for a meet? What do you have any like mantras you go through, or do you just go straight in head first? Yeah, obviously, because I compete in a federation that lasts 24 hour weigh-ins, I actually do like water cutting and stuff like that to hit my weight classes, like a lot of like boxing or like wrestling. So basically, on the day before that, I'm, I'm, I can lose anywhere up to 10 kilograms in a week, five to 10 kilos. And then the actual, there's not much matters going on at that point now, I'm that depleted. Once I'm weighed in, I'm, I spend a lot of time before the last 48 hours to actually try and rehydrate, get food into us and get the glycogen back in my system so there's not really much i'm not sure it's, you would class it as a mantra but more of it as a necessity but not obviously everyone that competes some people do a two-hour same day weigh-ins and stuff like that and obviously they've got a little bit they still water drop but obviously not as much and they won't have to think about it as much as i would but meat day for me is the uh because a lot of people like to uh, demonstrate strength and not actually build it so for me that for me the meat day is the way i can actually let loose and actually see how actually strong I really, I really am rather than in the gym. I mean, I do test here and there for specific purposes, like setting my training up, but, that's, but I try and save everything for that day, and that's my, like, that's my big payoff, that's my big, you know, off my diet days, off my actual, you know, where I could actually really let loose and, see, and actually, actually max out and stuff like that, you know? Yeah, absolutely, and that's really interesting you said that, you know, as you said, that build up in the training, when you're on that final day, you can actually go smash it out and, and hit massive, massive numbers. So unlike bodybuilding, that's the good thing about powerlifting is you don't have to be super lean to be competitive. You can go, well, I'm struggling at this way here. Well, maybe I should go that one class upwards or that, and then you know, have a lot easier time actually going on, you know. But if you're going to win at bodybuilding, you're going to have to be super lean and there's no way around that, you know. You are, of course, a European champion and a, a world record holder in your deadlift class. So how does that feel for you? To be honest, it's not really, <laughs> it's going to sound a, a little bit, um, I don't know, maybe egotistical or not, but it, actually, it was actually a bit lackluster to me because uh, on the actual day, actually, when I became European champion, it wasn't even my best performance. I was very lucky that people that, the best in the country or the world didn't turn up that day. And lucky I was the best guy on that day that did turn up. So, I mean, there's a skill involved there trying to get money to fly around the world to do these competitions as well. Being an amateur competition, not everyone else can do that. So a lot of times the actual national competitions are actually more competitive than the actual international ones because not everyone's got the money to go and fly over and actually do these things. And then, especially me water cutting, cutting I had to water cut on an airplane and then try and rehydrate and stuff when I got into Ireland and stuff like that. So as for the world record as well, that's another thing as well. Like there's a lot of world records out there. So my world record was actually in something called a submasters class, which not many people claim. So I spent a lot of time going through the records and seeing what there was there. So it was a single lift. Master class, and it seems significantly less than the rest of them. I thought, well, I'll just give that a go, and I, and I end up getting it. So, being like it's a niche sport, it's, it's open to a lot of people. And if you actually look around and you actually are competitive and selective, you can actually do quite well in the sport. Unlike something that's been around for, like, you know, like Olympic lifting, that you're probably going to have to be the, you know, the best of the best on a sponsorship and to actually compete in there. But powerlifting is a bit more, 
I don't want to downgrade it because it's obviously getting bigger and bigger and some of the events were big, but like it's more Sunday League than Premier League, if you know, or First Division than Premier League, if you know what I'm saying. So I think it's interesting that actually your your reaction to it wasn't a massive way hey, and that you know it was amazing, but actually, as you said, because it's it's niche and there are so many different avenues. It's just like another thing to take on board, but amazing achievements. So really well done for that. To be honest, my actual first meet where I came first, when there was actually more people there, meant a lot more to me than that one. So it's just it's just the way it rolls sometimes. If you've got a lot of people there and you put your best performance on there, it feels a lot better than flying over there and everything going wrong and just scraping through, you know? So I'll be honest with you, since I started powerlifting, my physique's pretty improved and more than I was bodybuilding. Because a lot of bodybuilding routines are actually subjective rather than objective. So you go, well, I've got, I feel like I've got a pump today. I feel like I've done my bit, I can go home. But, the, but when, you're, when you're powerlifting, you're, well, if you, don't, if you don't squat, you know, 550 pounds, you haven't squat 550 pounds. You know, there's no way around that. You have to do the work to hit that number. You can't go, well, I think I've added a bit of muscle there. I think I've then looked two years back and realized, well, I swap what rep ranges that many times. I haven't. There's always a constant variable there I can work from to know that actually I am improving, you know, so. Yeah, yeah. In terms of this year as well with COVID and stuff, do you have any competitions lined up? I know it's not a fun thing to talk about, but do you have any competitions lined up that were cancelled or anything you were, you were looking forward to that didn't go ahead? Well, I was supposed to do, um, I was supposed to redo the uh, national championships in Birmingham at Body Power, but obviously that all got cancelled and then I was obviously defending European champion as well and that was getting held in England there, so I might have done that one. But I'd already pre-qualified the previous year in, in Durham anyway. So at the end of the day, it all got rained off and it is what it is, you know, so. Yeah, and unfortunately, there's nothing you could do about it. And I guess, you know, it's, everyone's been affected by it. It isn't just one person. Actually, it's sports across the board, be it powerlifting, football, any sport you can name, for the most part, especially at lower levels and niche sports like powerlifting. It's a real shame that a lot of it actually has been cancelled. It's, yeah, really, really sad. I mean, in a lot of ways, I'm really quite lucky because obviously I actually made the decision a couple of years back to actually buy the same equipment and like I use a lot in the federation so I can train in the house using the proper gear and I'm not I can do that sort of thing well when a lot of competitors don't actually have that luxury you know so and if you've seen the second hand prices on equipment at the moment in time it's just gone completely crazy like so with like family life and stuff with COVID how have you balanced say training with family life and, and, and that sort of thing how do you weigh up like activities with the family or, or even just yourself versus like full on because you know, I think people forget that powerlifting is a is a sport that is a full-time occupation it's not just a you can do it on the weekend and it's fine it is one of those things where you have to think about every single day and so how how do you do that the way I balance things is is obviously I, uh, I use the uh, school trips as actually actually my low intensity cardio so at the moment I'm trying to build my actual capacity base so I'll have you know I'll have an hour's walk in there and when he's at school I will train in the afternoon I don't do much at the moment in time, maybe, you know, maybe an hour session and then I'll go and pick him up. And then obviously with most of my actual uh, services being online, I can just hit it on the internet and stuff like that. But if it was someone else and they, and they could get hold of a gym, they could just, you know, finish work at five o'clock, get in the gym, you know, half past six and leave it off seven or whatever, you know, so. How do you want to be remembered by, by the powerlifting community and the physique building community? What do you want to be remembered by? I mean, I've probably wanted more remembered by, by someone that's actually put back into the actual system because... You know, at the time when I went into this competition, you know, my, you know, my health wasn't the best, you know, I was pretty much borderline obese, you know, you know, things walking up the stairs and all that. So, you know, powerlifting itself has enhanced my life a lot. So if I can bring more people into the sport and, I, and if, especially if they're actually having problems, I like, keep them accountable and make a big positive life in, in there and maybe give them more energy for their family. I mean, I think getting into sport generally is a good thing and keeping active. So I'd rather be remembered as someone that's actually you know, as like Dave Tate would say, live, learn and pass on, you know, so maybe more as a, as a teacher and, a, and an ambassador of the sport rather than, I don't really have any illusions of Gajra being like the best ever lifter or anything like that, but someone, you know, someone that's solid in the community would be how I'd like to be remembered, you know. Amazing. Russell, that is really, really good. Well, thank you very much for your time. It was absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much. And I will speak to you soon. Okay, no problem. Cheers, mate.